Third baseman's in tight on him, looking for a bunt. Ground ball is drilled to second baseman Morgan. Easy play for him, one down in the first pick. As you look around this infield tonight of the National League, you notice it's a very stumpy all-star infield. Say at third, Bow at short, Morgan at second, Garvey at first, are all short players. Bert Campanaris hitting 279 of the world champion Oakland A's with two homers, 27 RBIs. He doesn't walk much. He's up there swinging most of the time. And now and then he can hit a long ball. You'll remember the seventh game of the World Series last year, he hit a home run. The strike to him, Messersmith threw him a curve. Messersmith will use a fastball, a slider, a changeup. And he can put that ball where he wants to. You saw him a couple of weeks ago in our Monday night game, and he was just great. Foul ball for strike two. Andy with an excellent change of pace. The last time we had him on our game of the week, a Monday night game, he shut a team out and threw almost 65% straight changeups. But he also has a great fastball slider and curve. He's got all the pitches. He's ahead of Campanaris, two strikes. Reggie Jackson's on deck. One out, nobody on. The American League batting in the top of the first inning. Fastball is high. This telecast presented by authority of Major League Baseball. As you look at Jackson, it's intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures without the express written consent of the Commissioner of Baseball is prohibited. And he struck him out on a sweeping curveball. So we have two down. Andy Messersmith, born in New Jersey, and moved to California, reared in California, an All-American player at the University of California. Here is Reggie Jackson, the player who received over three million votes from you fans. There's the trophy, and here's what Reggie thinks about the way you fans responded. Thank you and NBC for letting me take the time, Tony. It's a great, great shot in the arm for me, a great morale boost, and a great attitude builder. Just to finish in front of guys like Henry Aaron, in front of guys like Johnny Bench, I owe a heck of a lot to the fans, and I'll try to remember it every time I step on the field just to give that little extra effort so that I can say thank you in some way. Well, thank you, Reggie, and congratulations on receiving the most votes of any All-Star player, over three million votes. A ball to him. Jackson hitting for the year, 318, 17 homers, 58 runs batted in. He's a showman. In the All-Star game in Detroit a couple of years ago, hit one of the longest home runs in All-Star history. They estimated if it hadn't hit a transmitter on top of the roof in uh, right field at Tiger Stadium, it would have gone around 500, 550 feet. Kurt, I think he's the tip-off on a modern player. He doesn't look or guess. He says it's calculated anticipation. Calculated anticipation. That's right. That's good. <laughs> One ball, two strikes, two down. And he got him on a fastball. And the American League goes down one, two, three. So the score at the end of the first half inning, nothing, nothing, the National League coming up. Morning, we had some sprinkles here just before game time. It's overcast and a mist in Pittsburgh. And on the mound, Gaylord Perry, 35 years old. He nearly tied the all-time American League record of 16 wins in a row this year. Curtin Joe asked Gaylord Perry a while ago if the National League is going to see a different pitcher than when he used to pitch in the National League. They're not going to see the grease ball and the spit ball that they used to see over there when everyone else was throwing it. Uh, I'm going to use the fork ball a great deal, the hard slider, come up and in. Use the fastball, kind of low and away, and uh, mix in a few curveballs. When he talks about not throwing that grease ball, I was with Tom Ferrick and Charlie Metro over in Cleveland, and they're surprised at how fast he is. That he's now overpowering, and he can ride the high fastball. And uh, they're also impressed, the scouts are, at his ability to place that ball where he wants it. And boy, if you can do that, you are well on your way to winning. All the American League hitters talk about his velocity this year at the age of 35. Pete Rose leads off. Ball one. You wonder why the Reds were booed, the Red players and the uh, Met players. The Pirate fans are mad because Yogi Berra didn't pick Richie Zisk, who's second in the National League in batting on the squad, fouled away. And the Reds and the Pirates had a big fight here a week ago Sunday in this ballpark. And in that fight, uh Bourbon bit one of the players, Patterson, and they had to give him a tetanus shot, I believe, or a rabies shot. <laughs> and he pulled a head of hair off another one. <laughs> and blackened an eye. <laughs> he had a big day. 
Pete Rose batting 282 two homers 25 RBIs he wants to play the whole game he told his manager bear that's a fastball in for a strike one and two a little smile of derision there by Pete on that call yes, sir Joe you talked about the velocity you could see it on the first couple of pitches to Rose he flinched down the two he took and the other one was by him change up is foul back one ball two strikes that might have been his fork ball He's got good speed on that ball. I was surprised to see him throw that hard. And and he'll be the first to admit, Perry will, that that grease ball will take something away from your fastball. You know, uh, his great asset, though, is right behind his glove. It's what inside that stomach. He is one of the finest competitors in sports. One ball, two strikes to Pete Rose. And Rose strikes out. Like a fork ball that dips to him. Fork ball held with the two fingers to form uh, the sign of a fork or a V. The ball comes off and it drops off. He has it down to such a sophisticated uh, nature that he can make it go in or out by twisting his wrist or his fingers just slightly. Joe Morgan batting 302. And you take a look at that size and you say he can't be a long ball hitter, but he's banged out 13 homers, knocked in 40 runs. If he gets on, he always affords excitement. One out, nobody on, no score, last of the first. Robinson tied at third against him. Pitch a little bit inside. Ball one to Joe Morgan. Brooks Robinson even with a bag at third. Campanaris at short, Carew at second, and Dick Allen at first as the American League infield. Burroughs in left, Mercer in center, Jackson in right as the outfield. High and away. Two balls, no strike. Perry had his heart broken out in Oakland, going for 16 in a row. He lost a 10 inning game. By the blue beating that night. He hasn't pitched a bad ball game this year. Two balls and no strikes. Foul away. Came in with a fastball. A little extra mustard on it. There's Yogi Berra along with his coach Rube Walker, Johnny Bench. And uh, they love you here, Yogi. <laughs> <laughs> Poor about Sangi. <laughs> Manny Sangin is who they're talking about. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. Yogi picked his own catcher, Jerry Grody. That, that ball was a, that was a great pitch. Down and in. Two and two to Joe Morgan. High leg kick. Looked like the ball may have sailed a little bit. Joe, you were talking about his additional speed. He appears to me to have a little bit higher leg kick now, and he talks about having more rhythm, more thrust toward home plate. That may give him that added velocity. He pushes off that leg hard, Tony. Watch him push off now. And there's the fourth ball, and he struck him out. He's With already had four strikeouts, two by Messer Smith and two by Perry. There's an old cliche in baseball. Good pitching will beat good hitting. And some of the all-star games are low scoring because of the great pitching. Here's Aaron. Curtin Joe before the ball game, and we all know by now that Eddie Matthews was let loose as the manager of the Atlanta Braves. But I asked Henry Aaron if he would consider taking the job as the manager of the Atlanta Braves. Let's listen to what Henry has to say. Well, I haven't been offered a job, not of yet, Tony, and I think it would be out of matter of a courtesy that they probably would have offered me a job, but uh, uh, if I was offered a job, I certainly think that I would at this time simply because there are no black managers in the major leagues. Well, that's interesting because Aaron's always said being a manager is the worst job in America, but he says he would take the job if he was offered. Blown away. Henry Aaron, all time leader in the major leagues in homers, total bases, extra base hits. Just passed Ty, Go uh, Ty Cobb's record of the most games played, and also he's had the most times at bat in the history of Major League Baseball. Two balls and no strikes. This will probably be his last year as a player. I could ask Joe, former catcher, how do you work over Henry Aaron? Well, Tony, <laughs> you just hope that you can keep him to a single because if there's one thing that impresses you is that relaxed stance that he has. In fact, Robin Roberts said it best. He used to sleep between pitches. When that ball gets about six inches from him, you'll see a lot of activity. It's hard to pitch to him. Those wrists don't go to sleep. No way. The 2-0 delivery. There's a high drive deep to left. Jeff Burrows backing up. He'll have room. He puts it away. And the National League is out 1-2-3. At the end of the first inning, 0-0. Zero, zero.
Dick Allen, who showed up here at 18 minutes to eight <laughs> with an 8.30 starting time, is in the starting lineup, voted by you fans. I guess Dick Williams, glad to have his bat here, the heaviest bat in the majors. Ball one, what a year he's having. He's hit four homers in his last five games. Ten RBIs in those five games. He leads the majors in homers with 26. And he hits that one down the right field line. It's twisting toward the stands and the bullpen, and it's out of play. One ball, one strike to Dick Allen. Allen's seasonal average is 302. 70 RBIs. If Rod Carew were not up there with that 380 some batting average, this fellow would have a shot at a triple crown. He'll be followed by Bobby Mercer and then Jeff Burroughs. We have two handheld cameras here tonight. First time in baseball history. Run by a micro relay system and they'll be everywhere and take you places you've never been before in a major league ballpark. One and one to Dick Allen. Messer Smith drops behind him two and one. Fouls up in the way, two and two. Tony, I don't know if it's just me, but watching it from this angle from behind Johnny Bench, it looks like Messersmith at the last minute gives it that little extra, which would almost force you to take a swing at his elbow or his fingernails. He looks like he pauses right. back there, and all of a sudden he springs at you and his arm comes for you, like he's going to charge you. You can't time that kind of a pitcher unless you uh, go against him a few times. This is his first All-Star Game appearance. And he gets him on a curve, three strikeouts in a row for Andy Messersmith. He was picked to the squad one year, but didn't appear. He's starting tonight. He has a five-game winning streak. And Tommy John on the disabled list now. He's the hottest pitcher right now on the Los Angeles Dodgers staff. He's, he's always been hard to hit. Speaking of hitting, here's a fellow that got off to a very slow start wallowing around in the low 200 and now Mercer's batting 289 with six homers and he's knocked in 59 runs for the Yanks one ball no strikes to Bobby Mercer one out and so far it's been Perry and Messersmith Jeff Burroughs on deck he'll be up next to the Texas Rangers change of pace pitch one ball one strike Mercer has hit over 400 in his last 17 games he got in his mind he couldn't hit at Shea Stadium. He sure did, and he got that in his mind early. I think that myth has been dispelled now. Two balls and a strike to Bobby Mercer out of Oklahoma. Kurt, I'll only, I only say it once, but Johnny Bench, Dick Williams watching there, Johnny Bench never makes his pitcher look wild. Two balls, two strikes. Why, Joe? Because he doesn't jump up and down. He just has the glove there. He fondles the ball when he catches it. I think he could catch an egg from second base and not crack it. He's got real soft hands and never jumping around. He just catches the ball like a, the glove is like a tweezer. They had Mercer reaching. He hits it to Garvey covering his Messer Smith. They team up for the out. First baseman, the pitcher. Messer Smith covering the line correctly, running parallel to the line to go across the bag. Mercer way out in the front of the pitch. Just top the ball. Garvey shoveling the Messersmith, a good fielding pitcher. He's a good athlete. He's also a good hitter. He had to dig it out, come up with a good play as Mercer runs well. And here's a young power hitter of the Texas Rangers who leads the American League and runs batted in. Jeff Burroughs, batting 285, 16 homers, 73 RBIs. 23 years old. There's some good young players in that Texas club. And they're one of the most improved teams in the major league. Jeff Bourne lives in Long Beach, California. Two down, nobody on, no score on the top of the second. Fastball is inside, 1-0 and oh to Burroughs. Our handheld camera has moved over and gives you the look down the first baseline. Outside for ball two, 2-0 two oh to Burroughs. 
Might just add, Kurt, that on some of the signs, as we see it from the center field shot, Johnny Bench is not having trouble calling the pitches. It's his location, like he wanted the pitch outside to Burroughs, but Messersmith took charge and wanted it inside. Messersmith's 2 old pitch. Took a little off, change of pace. We said he's hard to hit. Anytime a pitcher allows less hits than innings pitched, he's got stuff. And throughout his major league career, he's allowed seven hits for every nine innings pitched. And talking to both National and American League hitters in this ballgame tonight, they almost all agree that Mandy Messersmith has the best changeup in the major leagues. Now Pete Rose said he's the toughest for him. In fact, of course, Rose has been trying to psych the Dodgers out. We'll talk about that <laughs> later. He's telling them, watch out. We'll be right by in about a month, boys. <laughs> they wear their big red machine T-shirts around the clubhouse. The 3-1 delivery is fouled back, and we go 3-2. and two. First full count we've had. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. WNBC-TV, New York. Here in Pittsburgh, Jeff Burroughs with two down. Nobody on as a 3-2 count. And he's on. Here's our first base runner. That brings up the veteran Brooks Robinson. Brooks enjoying a good season, hitting 3-11. Four homers, 30 RBIs. Always seems to play his best in the all-star competition or in a World Series. Foul back. High trainer voted the greatest third baseman of all time. There's Buzz Capra throwing now in the National League bullpen of the Atlanta Braves. First warm-up action we've had. I imagine Robinson's going to be right up there with Pye or right behind him. The all-time list of third. He's made some plays that the NBC cameras have captured in World Series that he could run 50 years from now and couldn't believe them. It was like a clinic when they played Cincinnati, wasn't it? Oh, this is his 18th consecutive All-Star game. He has a drive out in the left field, charging his rows. He has it. No runs, no hits, no errors, one left. At the end of an inning and a half, it's nothing, nothing. 74, Johnny Bench. Will lead off. And he, as you can see, has had an imposing all star record. A line, Sano, and Robinson have been above 300. And I'll tell you, hitting 300 or better, Joe, in all star competition is something considering the pitching you face. You can say that, boy, eight or nine times. You're facing the best every time you walk up there. Gaylord Perry breeze through the first inning. Bench has been swinging a hot bat at the strike to him. He's hit 360 in his last 15 games. And the Reds have started to make a move. Johnny has 17 homers, 65 RBIs. The age of 25, he won a Most Valuable Player award. He's off stride on that pitch at strike two. That was the fork ball, and Perry's feeding him that fork ball plenty tonight. You ask him, what's the secret at your age? He says, just a good old farm boy from North Carolina. Playing good old country hardball. Right. <laughs> Brother Jim is 37. This is the kid of the two. <laughs> Brother Jim's having a good year, too, with the Indians. Struck him out. That was smoke. He just threw the ball right by Johnny. 35-year-old Gaylord Perry now struck out three of the first four. Kurt talked about Brooks last inning, the great defensive moments and thrills he's provided us. Here's Brooks getting ready on a pitch. He likes to creep in just a little bit, has tremendous range to his left. Coming in on the ball, nobody like him. Jim Wynn of the Dodgers is up. He leads the National League at homers with 21, hitting 290, 69 RBIs. He's playing with a floating chip in his right elbow. He's going to have to have an operation when the season's over. It's hampering him. And he can't throw in the outfield. It could be a factor here in the early inning. I talked to Jimmy Wynn before the ball game and asked him what he remembers about Gaylord Perry when he faced him in the National League. Well, I remember one thing. Uh, you know, Gaylord likes to throw that greasy ball. 
And of course, the National League was a superstar, and the American League is a superstar. I'm just looking forward to facing that uh, uh, park ball that he has mastered a great deal. One strike that Jim win. One out, nobody on, no score, last of the second. That ball will be in the seats in back of third. The American League's behind third base. That's Thurman Munson, the American League catcher, and the National League's behind first. Kurt, I don't know of a power hitter uh, like Jimmy Wynn to the extent that uh, when you're a big power hitter, you take those free swings, but he really knows the strike zone. He takes a big swing, but he's not a wild swinger. He's a hard swinger, and there is a big difference. If you study him, he gets a long swing. He builds up bat speed. Watch him how far he'll come back now and start his sweep. The toy cannon. You get him in that nicknames on your show before the game, the toy cannon? <laughs> no, we didn't have room for that. We got shotgun shoe in yeah. there. <laughs> but I like pretzels Pizzullo. <laughs> <laughs> One ball, two strikes to Jim Wynn. He's second in the National League and walks to his buddy Joe Morgan. So Joe said he knows the strike zone. He hits a one hopper, skids in front of Campaneris, picks it up. You saw Campaneris play the World Series last year. You know what kind of a shortstop he is. And oddly enough, at one time, Burt was not considered a good defensive shortstop. He was an offensive ball player. He popped some home runs early in his career, but he has learned to play hitters, to get rid of the ball, make the pivot. Got that short hop. He really moved in on it. Steve Garvey. We talked to Garvey, a write-in candidate. He made it. Let's hear what he had to say with that honor. Tony has to be my highest honor because of the way it was attained. And the only thing I can do is send out one thank you for the million people that wrote my name in the ballot and to thank them very much for everything they've done to make this the happiest day of my life. And that's something to make the starting team on write-ins. You know, nobody sits down and writes mom a letter anymore. And Kurt, uh, how important it is to this youngster. He's not feeling well. Uh, those of us that know him, his face is puffy. He missed the last four Dodger games due to an ear infection, but uh, his wife was telling me in the hotel that his face is still puffy right around the jowls there, as you can well see if you know Steve. He's batting with two down, nobody on. We have no score last of the second. We haven't had a hit yet. We've had one base runner, a walk to Jeff Burroughs. That's been it. The one strike delivery fouled away and Gaylord Perry's ahead of him two strikes. Garvey if you notice him at the plate there's his buddy Ron Say on deck of the Dodgers and the Reds and Dodgers dominate the starting team seven of the nine starters on this team are from the Reds and Dodgers which tells you something. Now watch Garvey has more of an upright stance probably than any other player in this game. He has good power to right and left center field not a pull hitter strictly. Look at those arms. Yes, sir. Blacksmith. And he has a base hit up the middle. Well, there's our first test. Steve Garvey singles to center. Ron Say, the penguin, his teammates call him because of his, well, his size and his shuffling way of running, hitting 275, 12 homers. 64 RBIs, mostly a pull hitter. He'll hit the left field a lot, dangerous with men on. Very stocky. I think that's a cute story that Joe told about not only his legs, but his short arms. Joe, maybe you can it, tell our fans. <laughs> it's Boswell's story to the Mets. So get it in here, I hope. Nearly a wild pitch. Good stop by Thurman Munson. Said he slid into uh, second base and he was out. And Boswell said if he'd have slid in like a human being and it stretched his arms, he'd have made it. But he went in like a penguin and he went in with his elbows. <laughs> he does have short arms. Yesterday when they were working out, he was behind the batting cage with Pete Rose. And Pete says, "You know we're going to pass you, Ron." Oh, he let him have it, didn't he? He says, "We're going right by you." So I know you aged five years last year. You're a good ball player, though, Ron. <laughs> yeah. You got a good ball club. <laughs> There's a drive in a deep left center. That ball's tagged. And it's up against the wall. Coming into score is Garvey. Ron Say holds it second with a double. And the National League leads one to nothing. Well, you call him the Penguin, Joe. Take a look at this run. 
<laughs> he, takes, he, he takes strides about three feet long, doesn't he? He scoots, man. <laughs> Get him a tuxedo. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Shove him on a cigarette pack. <laughs> Larry Boap hitting 268. The shortstop for the Phillies. That's the first All-Star game for Garvey, Say, and Bowen. They're hitting in succession. There's a bounding ball to second baseman Carew. And that's all, but the National League has grabbed the lead. They had one run on two hits at the end of two, one nothing Nationals. Thurman Munson hitting number eight. Gaylord Perry is due to follow him. There's no action in the American League bullpen. Now they're getting some action. Louis Tion is getting up. They may hit for Perry. And then we'll go to the top of the order and pick up Rod Carew. Messer Smith struck out three, walk one in the first two innings. No hits. And he's in with a fastball for a strike to Munson, who replaced Carlton Fisk as the starting catcher. 247 average, you just see nine homers, 28 RBIs. Fisk probably won't play the rest of the year. He's going to have a cast taken off tomorrow and start his exercise. He has a base hit to left. He may get two on this one. It's rolling to the wall. Munson heading for second. And he's in with a stand-up double to lead off the third. Joe, they always talk about catchers being slow, but not Thurman Munson. He can run. He can really run. And Gaylord Perry's going to bat. Gaylord Perry. Let's see if they try and bunt the man over to third now. Johnny Bench wants to go out and talk to Messer Smith about it. I'm sure Kurt is just going to switch signs with Munson at second base. You know, they keep telling you it's another ball game, and yet they keep doing things that disproves that it's just another ball game. When you play cribbage for pennies, you try and win. Isn't that the truth? That's right. And the bun is on. He pops it up, but it's back up against the netting for strike one. Now you, uh, Tony, you played in the All-Star game. I think you had the best description of it. You come in, you have a three-day break, but once the game starts, complete different attitude. There's no doubt that the players want to win for their, for their leagues and be the hero and the star to gain respect for their teams. Good but Mr. Smith has to go to first, covering his Morgan. Sacrifice for Perry. Munson's over at third now with one out in the top of the order coming up. Spoke with Rod Carew just before the ball game, and we asked him this question: Do you still think you have a chance to hit 400 this year? Well, Tony, you know, I think if I went into uh, September hitting about 380 or so, uh, I think I would have a pretty good shot at it because, you know, usually in August and September I hit much better than I do the first half of the season. So if if I can keep swinging the bat the way I've been swinging, I think I could hit 400 if it's uh, if it's in reach. Rod Carew is an excellent bunner. Ball, when I. Uh one time in a bone for skiff down in the Florida Keys, I said to Ted Williams, can anybody hit 400 again? And he said, yes, somebody that can run, bunt, and slap the ball around and stay free of injuries. And this man described it. Here is Ken Brett of the Pirates. He's going to come in and pitch in the fourth inning for the National League. Kenny Brett. Carew moves the ball around to all fields. He makes contact. A ball and two strikes to him. Kurt, he also said to me, as we look at Munson down in third, that if he were playing on more artificial surfaces, and they have six in the National League, two in the American, he thought he would have a much better chance, as he can see the difference in his ad, uh, average in Kansas City and Chicago. In other words, those ground balls go through for him. And he strikes, goes after that low breaking pitch. There is Campanaris on deck. Bobby Mercer in back of him. Talking about a change of pace. They're all bearing down and watching Messersmith. Now Carew's on. Second walk by Messersmith. Runners on first and third. One out. Campanaris up. Campanaris struck out his first time. Carew's an excellent base runner. He has stolen 23 bases. The American League threatening. They're behind 1-0. And there's a bunt down to first and let it go. It's foul. It was not the suicide squeeze. 
The runner at third was waiting to see how the batter handled the ball. Munson before he broke. Look at it again, and very wisely, Steve Garvey lets the ball roll foul as Mur Munson ran well off third base. I like that play a lot. There's the angle on the ball as it rolls uh, foul. I like the play, Tony, because the run usually scores, and Kurt, if the worst thing can get out of it, the man's at second base with one out and a run in. All right. You got another man set up. You got your gunners coming up. Reggie Jackson's on deck. The one strike delivery. Low and away, one and one to Bert Campanaris. Mr. Rick used to always say, let those nits and nats get on, let them the lions and tigers eat them up. One ball, one strike to Bert Campanaris. He hits it foul, and that's Whitey Herzog. That's right, Whitey. It'll sting for two or three innings. <laughs> Herzog's coaching at third, and Jack McKeon, the manager of the Kansas City Royals, is over at first. Earl Williams is the other coach, and he's in the dugout. With Dick Williams, the manager. The one-two pitch. Ooh, that was close. Two balls, two strikes to Campaner. The winning managers last year are the managers for the next year's All-Star game. Of course, Williams was out of baseball, and Earl uh, Weaver was going to be the manager. There goes the runner, struck him out, the throw to second, now to into center field. Coming in to score will be Munson. Carew's on the way to third. He's in there, and the ball game is tied one to one. Benches throw, wide of Morgan in the center. We've talked a lot, Joe, about that hinged glove and the one-handed style as we watch Carew get the jump. But I think the ball might have gotten stuck in the webbing of Bench's glove. He couldn't get it out, and then he hurried his throw after he looked the runner back at third base and threw it wildly. And there's a near collision, almost hurting somebody right there as Carew just protects his face from the elbow of Joe Morgan. Very alert, he right, pops right back up into third base. And the... Here's that play where Bench is trying to dig it out. And he had a little trouble getting it out. The ball kind of sailed. There you saw it was it got by the pitcher and sailed out towards the uh, right field side of the bag. And Carew slid into Morgan, and that picked up an extra base. The and the National sailed. League has just made its first error of the last 11 All-Star games. They've gone 11 All-Star games in a row without an error. That's why they've been winning. They've been beating themselves. Johnny Bench charged with an error with a throw in the center field. The game tied, one all in the third inning. Two down, Carew at third. He can steal home. I don't know whether he tried an all-star game. Dick Williams back in baseball. There's Earl Weaver sitting alongside of him. And Weaver's captain out with the Angels, Frank Robinson. The 2-0 delivery. Three and nothing. And the throw in the center field seems to have shaken Messer Smith up a bit. You think he's looking for a hit sign at this particular spot, guys? <laughs> he's going to be wailing. Jackson struck out his first time. I'll tell you one thing. If he goes, he'll take one of the hardest swings in baseball. He's on. Three walks by Messersmith. Runners on first and third for the American League. And Dick Allen up. It's a dangerous pitch, I think, Kurt. You pointed out that the throw may have upset Messersmith a bit. Now he's walked Reggie Jackson on four pitches, and Allen, usually the slugger will go up there saying he may want to just let up a bit to get a strike and get ahead of me, and if he does, he may go to work on massage it pretty good. Look at Allen ready to bear down now. Fouls it off. He uses probably the heaviest bat in the majors. The boy, how he pulls that trigger. He can really get it around. One of the few guys that can loop the bat. He's got a hitch. He loops it, but he sure does get that bat in the strike zone when that ball's there. He slams it in the left field for a base hit. Carew scores. Jackson makes the turn and holds it second. And the American League leads 2-1. to one. An RBI for Dick Allen. That's the one thing has got to impress you about all-star competition. When you can get two hitters like Jackson and Allen back-to-back -back in the same lineup, they can just devastate you. And they'll scare you, and I think they frighten Messersmith just a shade right then. Bobby Mercer grounded out his first time. Let's face it. One of the reasons for the success of the all-star game in baseball, which has been the most successful of all professional sports all-star classics, 
really not a team game. It's individual performers. Nobody can help you at bat. A strike. Nobody help you pick up that ground ball or chase that fly. And each man extremely skilled in doing the individual things that are so important in baseball. So you don't have to play together as a unit that's been together for weeks. One and one. It's still that simple game Willie Mays talks about. When they throw it, I hit it, and when they hit it, I catch it. Runners on first and second. Two down. The American League has scored twice in the third. They're out in front, two to one. There's a shot. Oh, a good stab by Garvey's up. Throws to Mr. Smith. Sides out. He trapped that ball on the artificial surface and had to make the play. Two runs, two hits, one error, two left. At the end of two and a half, two to one, American League. 400, he did it in 41 before his 23rd birthday, which he celebrated early that year in the All-Star Game. This has been called by many as the most dramatic moment in the history of the All-Star Game. The American League trailed five to four in Detroit, bottom of the ninth, two out, two on, Williams at bat. Claude Passo, the Cubs on the mound. Williams, an effervescent young kid, always has great enthusiasm. But look at Tony. That was his greatest thrill in baseball. He really showed it, too. We got a man up now, Ralph Garr, who is going to be a pinch hitter for the National League, and a couple of defensive changes for the American League squad. Yastrzemski, there's Gretchen at second, and Yastrzemski goes to first base. Allen is out, Carew is out. Ralph Garr, leading the National League in batting. A strike. The Roadrunner, he had to get the permission of, I think, a movie company to use that nickname, the Roadrunner, <laughs> from the cartoon, the Roadrunner. He, he can run roads and bases. One strike to Ralph Gar. That's the fork ball by Gaylord Perry, nothing in two. Gar leads the majors in base hits and in triples. And if I ask you a little personal quiz, the two strike delivery, foul back, who leads the major leagues in total bases? You might say, oh, it must be one of the big power boys, Dick Allen, Reggie Jackson. No, sir, it's this fellow right here. Ralph Gar has 201 total bases to lead the major leagues at the All-Star break. Pete Rose will be on deck, and then Joe Morgan. We talked to Ralph Gar before the game. You mentioned he has 149 hits. We asked him what he foresees the second half of this season or after the All-Star game the last two months. Well, that's great. You know, you go out and do what you are capable of doing and use it to its highest potential. I've been pretty successful this year. I've been topping the ball. I've been bunting. I've been hitting the ball hard every now and then. Most of all, God has blessed me to keep my legs strong, and I've been running pretty well, and everything's been going great for me, and I just hope that I can continue to make good contact as the year progresses, and hope they go on and have a good year. Yeah, Ralph, you didn't make contact then. Gar strikes out as a pinch hitter. Now Pete Rose, who's a switch hitter, is up for the second time. He struck out his first time. The National League now has two left-handed batters Brock and Grubb in the dugout they have three switch hitters in the dugout and this can get important in the late inning four strikeouts for Gaylord Perry the American League's ahead two to one and last of the third pounding ball hit the second baseman Gritch over to the new first baseman Yastrzemski who's been plagued with a bad back but felt all right to get in the lineup tonight two down Joe Morgan struck out. Here's a fellow having a tremendous year, Bobby Gritch of the Orioles. I tell you, the American League's desperate to win. They lost 11 of the last 12. The new American League president, Lee McPhail, put out an order asking the managers not to pitch any of the American League starters on Sunday so they'd be rested. And Dick Williams said, I'm not going to put everybody in just to make everybody happy tonight. If we get ahead, I'm going to keep a lineup on the field to win. There's a high foul out of play. They 
Roy, you heard us for Ken Brett, who just trotted in from the National League bullpen. Ten of the last 11 the American League's lost. Kenny Brett, he's the only Pirate representative here tonight. And the Pirates are getting hot. They won eight in a row. They hated to see the All-Star break come. He sure did. Two down, nobody on. Hard ground ball, hits the umpire. Art France, balls in play. Joe Morgan goes to second. Probably would have been a double in, uh, anyway, but Art France was hit in the foot by that hot grounder. Yastrzemski playing off the line, didn't have a chance. You'll see the ball as France is in foul territory, just ticked his foot. The ball would have gone down to the corner anyway for a sure double, maybe a triple if it started bouncing around down there. Matter is Hank Aaron. He told me tonight that Sadahura O, oh, the great Japanese home run hitter, who's over 600 home runs now at the age of 32, has challenged Henry to an international home run hitting contest. 50,000 bucks to the winner, and Henry's going to take him up and go to Tokyo after the season's over. Hmm. And go against Sadahura O. Oh. O oh has a chance to. Or he's through maybe to pass them all in home runs if you want to count the Japanese Major League competition. Well, he's the, we've, we've talked to the Dodgers, Walter also. They all say he's a great hitter, the Japanese fellow. Oh, but he and Aaron will go at it in October in Tokyo. Just wonder who the pitcher's going to be. That's going to be fairly important. Each is going to choose his own pitcher and have his own pitcher. Hank told me. Two down, Joe Morgan at second. Two to one, American League. Now Munson and Perry getting together. Morgan was looking in. Well, Munson has been using a very simple set of signs. It's been the first flash that he gives, and the tip-off was that Perry was going into his delivery before Munson completed his given his signs. And with the man on at second base, Morgan was doing a good job of decoying and stealing signs. You got to feel like the ballpark is a booby trap when you play that they're stealing signs from everywhere. Aaron sent Burroughs to the warning track. His first time up with a long fly to left. There's Burroughs. Average outfielder, not a great one. But average. He is a bounding ball deep short. Campanaris with a strong arm. It's there in time. No runs, a hit, one man left for the National League. At the end of three, it's two to one in favor of the American League. Up with the Red Sox, went to Milwaukee, then the Phillies. The Phillies traded him over the winter to Pittsburgh for Dave Cash, a trade that has proven out for both teams. Cash has helped the Phillies, and Brett certainly has been a mainstay for Pittsburgh. Jeff Burroughs walked his first time. Brett had a sore arm the last year or two. He's typical of a lot of young left-handers who sort of develop late. He's not real late, but coming into his own now, two balls and no strikes. Yogi told me that he would have made him a hitter, Kurt. He's that good a hitter. He's had, he's had a better than 300 batting average all year. <coughs> Excuse me. That pitch tailed off a little bit from Burroughs. Look at the room from our handheld camera between the right fielder win and that foul line. He hits the ball down in that area. It's going to go forever. A curveball is low, and the count is three and one. Tony, this is apropos of nothing, but I think the National League with their white shoes is dressed better. <laughs> well, we got to take a look at those A's players more. <laughs> and they're the only ones. Cincinnati, they usually wear uh, red or black, but they've got white shoes on. They're happy as kids uh, with Morgan, uh, especially out there. But I don't know, it brightens it up. I like all those colors. I remember when the A's first broke out with the color uniforms and the gold shoes, uh, they laughed at them about being a woman's softball team. Right. Burroughs has walked twice. Brooks Robinson lined to left in his first trip. Two runs, two hits for the American League. One run, three hits for the National League. There's a high pop. Morgan calling for it, the National League second baseman. And little Joe squeezes it for the out. Burroughs stays at first. And the National League has one error, their first error since the ninth inning 
The second game of the 1962 All-Star Game. Error committed by Eddie Matthews. Actually, two errors on one play. That's quite a record, going 11 years without an error with full houses and millions watching on television. Thurman Munson is double. If you're keeping score along with us, Sedeno is going to bat third in the National League lineup, and Ken Brett in the leadoff spot. A strike to Munson, who scored the first run for the National League. He doubled 11, went to second on a sacrifice, scored on a throwing error by Bench in the center field. A one-strike delivery. And he pops it up in the shallow right, coming hard to win. Going backs Morgan, wagging for it. Takes it, out number two. And Morgan can do everything. Boy, he can. He just is a good ball player. Hey, look at here. Al Kaline. Al Kaline coming up. The classy veteran of the Detroit Tigers who is on his way and he's after it. He needs 58 more hits to reach the magic 3,000 level. If he doesn't get him this year, he said he's going to stay on and play next year. He wants the 3,000 hits. Fouls it back. The last man, or the last two men, you have to go back nearly 50 years in the American League for the last man to reach 3,000 hits. Chris Speaker and Eddie Collins of the 1925 season. And the most recent player, the late Roberto Clemente, to reach the 3,000 mark level. Only 11 players in the history of the Major League that reached 3,000 hits. One and one. There's Burroughs at first. Two down. Two to one American League in the fourth inning. K-Line pops it up. Johnny Bench flipping the mask away. And that's all. Brett, after walking Burroughs, gets three pop-ups in a row. At the end of three and a half, it's two to one American League. You know, they call Pete Rose Charlie Hustle, but the original was a guy I first played with during my rookie year with the Cardinals, and I'm talking about Enos Country Slaughter. In the 1953 All-Star Game, which was won by the National League 5-1 to one, at Crosby Field in Cincinnati, was a good example. Polino was 37 then, but he was a one-man wrecking crew. Harvey Keene found that out when he was robbed of a sure hit by this spectacular catch. With Mike Garcia pitching to Jackie Robinson. Eno stole second base. Yogi Berra was the catcher. Satchel Page in his windmill style was perfect for Slaughter. He singled off the oldest man ever to play in an all-star game. And Roy Campanella scored on a base hit. It was a one-man performance in the 1953 all-star game by Eno Slaughter, the original Charlie Hustle, who could do it all, and he did it every single day. Now here's a man that almost falls apart in everything but the wind column. <laughs> Louis Tion. 14 wins for the Red Sox veterans. Seven losses. 2.78 earned run average. He got off to a slow start. And he's a new papa. Had a baby boy Saturday. We have uh, Joe Rudy in left field. He has replaced Jeff Burroughs. Rudy now the left fielder. And he'll be batting sixth, and Tion will be batting ninth. <laughs> There's a, <laughs> it's not the blooper, it's not the Ephus, it's just the Tion wiggle. He is fun to watch. He turned his back completely to the hitter, Johnny Bench, looked out to his center fielder, said, I'm throwing him a changeup, and he did. <laughs> the 1 1 delivery by Tion. That's his fastball, and listen, he has something on it when he wants to uh, deliver. He has his favorite saying is, What you need. <laughs> what you need. An obliging guy, great sense of humor, a fun man to have around a ball club. A one-two pitch. <laughs> Look at that head jerk. Hey. Okay, let's take a look at Louis Tian again. He doesn't ever look at the hitter, doesn't seem like. Down on his toe, up at the sky, out to center field. And he comes from all directions with four or five different pitches. Bench Oops. solves him for a line drive, hits the left. Rudy has it on a hop. So Johnny Bench, who struck out the first time, is single. The National League has out-hit the American League 4-2, to two, but the American League's ahead 2-1. to one. Jim Wynn bounced to short his first trip. 
Peon pitched over the weekend in Texas, flew to Mexico City, where his wife presented him with a new baby boy, and then he flew here to Pittsburgh for the All-Star game. So he's put in some miles. And that one is in the center field for a base hit. Bench is coming to third. Runners on first and third. Nobody out. Jimmy Wynn single. Sparky Anderson coaching at third, the manager of the Cincinnati Reds. Red Shandings, the manager of the Cardinals, is coaching at first. Old silver locks. There's the redhead. You got the white and the red <laughs> on the coaching boxes tonight. And Tion has been tagged for two singles by the first two men he's faced. Steve Garvey singled his first time up. And he drills it into left field. Base hit going to the corner. Bench is scoring. Win is rounding third. He's being held up. Garvey has a double. The game is tied. And Tion has been no mystery to the National League. Garvey is two for two, and Weaver's calling the bullpen. Our, our uh, mobile camera's right down there in the American League dugout now, and he's giving you a look. You've never seen this look before in a televised ball game, the look out on the field from the manager's viewpoint. And this is a different look than any other park because the Pittsburgh dugouts are even with the playing field. Most of them are below the playing field. And now there's a camera right in back of Dick Williams. You always wonder what it looks to look out from a major league dugout. You're seeing it tonight. A rare look for you fans across America. Ron Say, who doubled and knocked in a run his first time, looks at ball one. And Dick Williams is anxious. That American League bullpen looked like a firehouse for just a couple minutes. There were players scurrying all over the place. Wilbur Wood and Catfish Hunter are now throwing. National League is a run in. They have runners on second and third. Nobody out. They've tied it at two all. Herb is outside, two balls and no strikes. And now Williams is coming out to talk to Tion. Tion is pitching himself in a deep trouble here in the last of the fourth. This is Williams' third time as a manager in an all-star game. He's had a brilliant record in just six years of managing. He's won three pennants, one at Boston, two at Oakland, and two world championships. Tian's motion certainly has not fooled the National League hitter so far, but he's also hung some curveballs, especially the one to Gar behind inside. Tony, I can imagine with the first base open, too, Williams, Dick Williams, wanted to find out how Tian felt. He doesn't have a big power hitter coming up next, and Say can pop the ball, and uh, if he hits one now, it'd be a big, big bulge for the National League. They're deep and toward left for Ron Say. There's ball three. You saw that uh, little bulletin flash to you. Four first place finishes for Williams. One of those was a division championship, but they lost the pennant to the Orioles in the playoffs when he was out at Oakland. And of course, you all know the story of Williams and Finley and walking away. Ground ball to second. Gritch is up, looks to home, lets the man come on in, and throws Say out at first an RBI for Say, who now has knocked in two runs. You don't think they want to win? Huh. Two RBIs in this game for Ron Say, and the National League leads three to two. Moving to third was Steve Garvey, with one out. Larry Boa grounded out his first time. An excellent bunter in the infield's in. The infield in now. They'll try and choke off this run if they can. Boa hits it down the first foul. Outfield playing very shallow for Larry Boa also, and they've got some pretty good throw ar throwing arms, especially in right field and Reggie Jackson. Mercer throws well. Rudy charges the ball like an infielder and gets rid of it. Ball one strike one to Larry Boa. American infield drawn in tight. The outfield straight away. Boa pokes the ball around at a long ball hitter and fouls it away and it's one ball two strikes. 
Ralph Gars on deck. He's batting ninth. He came in as a pinch hitter in the third and stayed in the ball game. Ralph Gar. There's a grounder to short. The draw in the infield. Campaneras looked the man back. Throws Bo out. Two down. Garvey still at third. And Ralph Gar's up. He struck out his first time. Now the infield backs up. With two outs, they've still got to be a little bit cautious with Gar up there because he's a pretty good bunner. He may try and score the run that way. And also, they have to play Antonio and Joe a step or two on him. Robinson's even with the bag at third because of Gar's tremendous speed going down the line. Change up is foul back. That is uh, Teon's hesitation fit, sort of a takeoff of Satchel Page's stopping at the top of his delivery, hesitating, then coming on through with his delivery. One strike to Ralph Gar. Three to two, National League. High fly down the left field line. Campanaris going out, calling for it. A foul ball, he has it, the sides out. Two runs, though, for the National League. Three hits, they left one. At the end of four, three to two, National League. Exciting and entertaining Major League Baseball films are available for group showings at your organization or club function. For a free brochure of baseball film listings, send a postcard to Baseball Film Division, 1650 Broadway, New York, New York, and the zip is 10019. The preceding announcement furnished by Major League Baseball. This is the commissioner's box on your right in the front row, Mr. and Mrs. Kuhn or Mr. and Mrs. Galbraith. I don't know the other gentleman. It's Bill Salatis, the president of Gillette North America. And uh, Julian Goodman, chairman of NBC, chairman of the board. Back on the right, Herb Slosser, president of NBC. Bob Howard, the president of the television network. I saw Joe Cronin there, who just retired as president of the American League in the second row. Hall of Famer, Joe Cronin. In that second round, Carl Lindemann, vice president of sports of NBC. There's a drive in the right field by Bob Gritch to lead off the fifth. He's on. Gritch has hit 15 homers this year. He's one of those players pros that grows on you. You have to watch him every day to really appreciate him. Bert Campanaris has struck out twice. Six Hello. hits now. For the National League, three hits for the American League. I love that Gritch's name. It looks like one of those abbreviated things yeah. just to be in a box score. Campanaris trying to bun again down the first base line. Strike one to him. His wife's quite a painter, you know. He does the artistry with a bat, with the feet and the glove, and she does it with the, <laughs> the oil brush. Ken Brett has just allowed his first hit. He's in relief of Messer Smith. Inside a ball, one and one. You hear that chatter in the infield. Trying to get a sign. Garvey holding against Gritch at first. The move. Gritch now wandering far. All right, France right on top of that bag, the first base umpire. Again. Now Ron Say, meanwhile, in the other corners, creeped in. He's even with a bag over there. A 2 1 count to Campanaris. We're getting ready here for a play now. I was going to say, usually when a fella tries to bunt and start something, if he ever got that count to 2 and 1, I'd say 9 out of 10 times he's going to go. Now let's watch Bobby Gritch. He is going. Foul away. They had the hit and run on. Good call, Joe. It seems to me the two and one is the, uh, I don't know if you find that way as an infielder, Tony, the managers delight two balls and one strike. You know that pitcher or catcher don't want to go to three and one, and you got the infield in. Even if you just fake a bunt or foul it off as Campanaris did the first pitch, everybody moved in. And then Dick Williams pulled the switch. All right, it's a 2-2 count to Bert Campanaris. He struck out twice. He hits a drive in the right center. Back deep goes to Daniel. Back, back, and grabs it on the run. He just outran that ball, fires to first, trying to double up the runner. That's the play of the ball game so far. 
He was playing campy to left center field and underestimated his power, and he ran a mile. Cedeno, after the luncheon for the players by the commissioner this afternoon, had food poisoning. They almost had to take him to a hospital. He lost the feeling in his hands. They did not think he was going to play, and look what he comes up with and almost throws behind Gritch and doubles him off. He can do everything. Well, he has tremendous skills. He leads the majors in RBIs. He won his second successive Golden Glove Award last year. One of the three best defensive outfielders in the National League. He can hit. He can go from first to third in a line drive single to left. Reggie Jackson, a ball to him. Reggie has struck out, walked. One out. As Sedenu has just dropped Campanaris and maybe saved a run of an extra base hit. A big high hopper hit to Morgan. He goes to second. Gamble out. No play at first. Morgan unloaded that ball quickly to Larry Boa. And Larry Boa gives a pretty good target as he moved to the outside of the bag so that the ball, the throw, would not hit Gritch sliding. Had he stayed right on the bag, the ball might have hit Gritch, bounced away. Chancy play by Morgan. Good defense so far in this game by the National League. Garvey, Cedeno, now Morgan getting the lead runner. Carl Yastrzemski up for the first time. A strike in the corner to him. He's hitting 331. He is second now in the American League in batting to Rod Carew. Carl has 11 homers, 54 runs batted in. Perennial All-Star for the Red Sox. And this is the Allegheny Club. This is one of these private clubs we have in all the new stadiums in baseball. Look at them, isn't that? That's a tough way to watch a ball game, huh? I'd say the good old days are right now. A little more dessert, sir? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> Jackson's at first. One ball, two strikes. Reggie, a big man, though, is an excellent base runner. He's stolen 10 times in 14 attempts this year. American League trailing by one run. He reaches and pokes it down the left field line. Gar racing. No one can get to it. It's in the seats. One ball, two strike count to Carl Yastrzemski. Amazing thing about the man right there, Reggie Jackson, and he reminds me so much like Mickey Mantle. He can dominate a game in so many different departments. Jackson told me before the ball game, he said, watch, I'm going to be the star of this game. He believes every game he's going to go into that he's going to be the dominant force. That's what kind of confidence he has. He's got that great quality that all stars have, which is called, Pete Reeser called it, inner arrogance. He knows he can do it, and that's the way you have to feel to get the job done. And it's a uh, stabs by Morgan at first, and he took a base hit away from Yastrzemski. No runs, a hit, one left. And the score at the end of four and a half, three to two Nashville. Love power steering, cause I'm not too strong. White walls, wheel covers, bright trim all belong. This vinyl roof, radio for a song. That's why this lady drives a scam. Get the special equipment and you can get an automatic transmission at no extra charge. Good gas mileage, too. That's why this lady drives a scamp. Scamp, one of eight great small car buys from Plymouth. After eight straight losses, the American League finally won the 1971 All-Star Game at Tiger Stadium, Detroit, 6-4. One of the key reasons was pinch hitter Reggie Jackson, who probably slammed the longest home run in All-Star Game history. Jackson connected off Doc Ellis. The ball sailed high, 520 feet from home plate, and then bounced back onto the field. Might have gone 600 feet and out of the park if it had not hit a power transformer. Later, Al Kaline of the Tigers said, I've been in this park 18 years, and I never saw a ball hit that hard. And looking in from our mobile camera in center field, we also have a new center fielder now for the American League. George Hendrick of the Cleveland Indians has replaced Mercer. Lou Brock is coming up to bat in the leadoff spot for Ken Brett. The fans are booing. They wanted to see Brett hit. Lou Brock. And we thank the Pittsburgh Pirates for their courtesy. And they have been marvelous hosts to the nation's press, radio, TV, and all the fans here. 
for this all-star game. Lou Brock, 316 average, three homers, but a big story him, of course, 60 stolen bases. Change up in the right field. We'll get a chance to see him now in the bases. Mm. He's on. He is 22 games ahead of Maury Wills' pace when Wills broke the all-time record, Ty Cobb's record, in 1962. But Wills stole 40 seven bases or 49 of his last 55 games. And let's not only watch Lou Brock, let's watch Luis Tion, who has all kinds of trick moves toward home plate and toward first base. Some say he balks, but watch him. All right, Brock getting back. Brock stole his 60th game and his 60th base in his 95th game. Maury is the 60th base. Bluffs the dash, doesn't go. And that's a sign of a good base stealer. Lou knew he did not have the good jump. Tian held the ball, got him flat-footed, so he decided not to go. Actually, as I uh, look down here, Morris stole 53 bases in his last 59 game to pinch it down even more. And Brock knows he's got a fantastic pace in August and September to break the all-time record. But he's going for it. There, he starts the bluff, it doesn't go. I want to tell you one thing. 60 bases at the All-Star break for a man 35 years old is an amazing feat. That it is. It's an amazing feat any time, but All-Star break, it's a lot. It's a real cat and mouse game going on here because Tiant is throwing from any part of the uh, stretch position he's going into, and Brock, who has the green light to run any time he gets the jump. Oregon has struck out and doubled. It's a 2 nothing count. Brock is going. Here's the throw by Munson. He's in there. He's got it. He's on his way to third. Brock steals second, goes to third on the throw in the center field. That's his first stolen base in all-star game competition. The amazing part of Lou Brock, everybody knows he's going. Pitcher, catcher, all you television viewers. Munson, one of the best defensively in the baseball, getting rid of the ball. He sidearmed it, got rid of it quickly. Look at it again. Tony, I didn't think he had a good jump at that because he kind of broke back off his foot rather than uh, his left foot rather than the crossover and uh, that throw, a low throw, and Brock in complete control goes on over to third. Good throw would have had him beat you all, yes, as you sir. said. You could see it. And a throwing error charge to Thurman Munson. Each catcher now has been charged with a throwing error. Runner on third, nobody out. National League ahead, 3-2, to two, a foul ball. He went after that 3-0 pitch. 3-1 three and one count to Morgan. Cesar Cedeno is on deck. You have two different throwing styles in Munson and Bench. Uh, Bench is a gunner, whereas uh, Munson, good, accurate, flips that ball and gets rid of it quickly, but this one sailed on him. Tion has been roughed up for four hits. There's a drive twisting down the left field line. It'll be in the American League bullpen. Looks like Jim Hunter chasing it. The Raleigh Fingers. Raleigh Fingers. Tiant, you'll observe working out of the stretch with a runner on third, Lou Brock. Robinson in tight at third. Yastrzemski close at first. A 3 2 pitch to Morgan. Line drive in the center field at Hendrick. Brock will score easily. He could crawl in on this one. And the National League has a 4-2 lead, a sacrifice fly, an RBI for Joe Morgan. Here's Sedeno. We said he could do it all. Watch his catch again off the bat of Bert Campanaris. Then we'll tell you about his batting and his base running skills. Here he is now, just inserted in the game in center field, robbing Campanaris of at least a double. And maybe a triple the way Campanaris can run. He just outran that ball with his speed. So Daniel leads the majors in RBIs with 75, 19 homers, a 299 batting average, and he's stolen 36 bases. What credentials? <laughs> and still in his young 20s. Three All Star games, the age of 23. He has those same credentials as Reggie Jackson has, can do it all. He hits a high fly out to left center. George Hendrick loses his cap, but not the ball. There's two down. Yeah. 
Morgan has knocked in a run for the National League. Garvey's knocked in one, and Ron Say has driven in two. Johnny Bench struck out, single. He scored a run. Three homers in all-star games for Johnny. He'll have a lot of all-star games left. Back in the all-star game in Washington, Bench hit a line drive. Yastrzemski vaulted above the left field fence and robbed him of a home run. A one strike pitch. One ball, one strike to Bench. George Hendrick will hit in Bobby Mercer's spot. So he'll be due uh, to lead off in the sixth inning for the American League. Rudy will follow. And then Brooks Robinson. Three balls and a strike. Tion has not been as effective tonight as he's been the last six weeks with the Red Sox. You got Johnny Bench talking to himself, Kurt. The three one pitch to Bench. Strike two with a fastball three and two. I don't know how you would feel hitting against him Kurt or Tony did you ever bat against him. Yeah uh, when he first came up with Cleveland and he could throw hard and that's about all he did. Now he mixes them up quite a bit. But I wish he'd look at you when he throws. <laughs> well, what a bargain for the Red Sox they picked him up in the minor leagues everybody thought he was done. 20 game winner last year on his way to another 20 game season this year. Jim Wynn has grounded out single he scored a run bench at first two down the National League has scored a run in this inning and they're leading four to two in the last of the fifth NBC hopes you're enjoying this all star game from Free River Stadium in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Oh and one to win. Got Catfish Hunter and Wilbur Wood now throwing once again Kurt and Joe down to that American League bullpen. I think Matlack will come in for the National League. He was warming up down there a while ago. The players that are picked by the fans must play at least three innings at the start of the game. A pitcher cannot work over three innings unless it's into extra innings. Got the Fu Manchu, the side burns, the works. <laughs> one one pitch to win. Slow win. Floating in. One ball, two strikes to Jim Wynn. There he is, a little way that he tries to deceive that runner and also the hitter a little bit as he comes down, and that's been contested by some saying it's a ball. Can the umpire say no? It's part of his natural motion. He does it all the time. He's pitching one ball, two strikes to Jim Wynn. Now the move to first. He oh. nearly got him. He went off oh. the ball. <laughs> Johnny had about a step and a half lead. Well, he hypnotizes you the way he uh, moves that glove. You know, he can trick you into it. He can throw from anywhere when he comes set. Look at him. Out of the plate. Foul ball back. This is his second All Star game. He was a starting pitcher in the 68 game at Houston. He was charged with a loss, a one to nothing loss. And his own throwing error to first base led to the run. Willie Mays in that game scoring the unearned run that won the game for the National League. Change up, hit deep to right. Jackson backing up. He's an excellent outfielder. That's all, but the National League picked up a run, a hit. There was one error, one left. At the end of five, four to two, National League. Dick Tracy. We pause now for station identification. Roy Clark, Rich Little, and Loretta Swit on the Mac Davis Show Thursday night. you to beat one of our favorite fellows in sports broadcasting Bob Prince 
the colorful voice of the Pittsburgh Pirates. And we wanted you to come in and say hello to the nation fans tonight, Bob. Well, thank you, uh, Kurt and everybody. It's really nice to be here. And it's awfully good to see the National League, if I may root just a moment on national television for our National League club to be ahead 4 2. But there's one thing missing here, Kurt. I can't get over the fact that mere mortals now play right field with the loss of Roberto Clemente. I saw uh, Mrs. Clemente. She was at the luncheon, and uh, they dedicated a new ballpark in his name, right? Yes, they did down in Miami. And of course, this young man will go on to be one of the great superstars as time erases uh, the memory of him to one degree. But uh, the game is on now, and you have a new pitcher, John Matlack of the New York Mets, working. All right, thank you, Bob Prince, for being on with us. George Henry. Facing John Matlack. Matlack has won nine, lost six. Earn run average at 2.55. His first All Star game. Two balls and a strike. Reggie Smith now has moved to right field. He's replaced Jim Wynn. Smith will be leading off in the batting order for the National League. Henrik fouls it back. Henrik has arrived now as an established major league ball player. Some of the Oakland A's were moaning Joe in the clubhouse that they wish the A's had been more patient and kept him. He's got as quick a bat, and when they talk about tools, this fellow's got them all run, throw, everything. There it is. He hits it in the center field. He's a 300 hitter with the Indians. And Mac 16 homers. So George Hendrick leads off in the sixth inning. He didn't hit that ball good either, Kurt. It just shows you how strong he is, what you were talking about. He may have even broken his bat. Joe Rudy. We've talked about this in the Saturday game of the week, NBC's Monday Night Baseball. Not out in the Bay Area, but maybe the most unappreciated Major League ball player today, Joe Rudy. I'd go along with that. Never says a word. All he does is just do the job, make the big plays, get the big hits, play outstandingly in the World Series. He's up for his first time. Ball one to him. He's knocked in 62 runs and hitting 303, and he's had 26 doubles to lead the National League or the American League. Bob, were you disappointed? Only one pirate picked in the all-star team? No, not at all. I think and our fellows responded very beautifully to it, Kurt. Uh, they said you don't deserve to be in, you don't get in. Well, I want to ask you one last question. Mm -hmm. You won eight in a row. You've been wallowing around, down around the bottom. Suddenly your bats are starting to zing. You're getting some pitching. Who's going to win that National League Eastern Division? Well, I think seriously, it's up for grabs as they've written uh, all six ball clubs in the National League East can do it right now. Matlack was pitching last year at this particular time and trailing by six and a half games. They came on to win it. I think anybody can win it. Naturally, if I might be partisan for one moment, I would hope the Pirates do. OK, thank you very much, Bob. Thank you, Kurt. Joe Rudy. A ball and two strikes. We're now in the National League bullpen with our creepy camera and warming up out there is Lynn McLaughlin of the St. Louis Cardinals. Something's going on in the stands. That's what it looks like in a bullpen if you're out there with that, behind that camera. Right now we have George Hendrick at first. Nobody out. One ball, two strikes to Joe Rudy. Foul ball back. You hear a disturbance in the stands, a noise going on. I don't know what's going on, Joe. I got a, there's no fight. Oh, I tell you, it's another one of those, uh, those people that come to the ballpark to be seen, not to see. Mm. You know, it's, yeah. uh, it's a streaker marked down to a dollar 98 is all I can tell you. It's ridiculous. It really is. One ball, two strikes. Henrik at first. Sixth inning, the American League, two runs down. Rudy trying to go to right behind the runner, fouls it away. He's got Garvey. There's McLaughlin warming up. The Cardinal pitcher in the National League bullpen, Lynn McLaughlin, but 
Rudy hits to right field, Kurt, as we all know, with that stance. He's got a big hole between Morgan and Garvey. Garvey, of course, holding Hendricks close at first. They're shifted around to the outfield, too, over to right field. One ball, two strikes to Rudy. Here's a high fly ball at deep right. Reggie Smith on the warning track for the first out on the top of the sixth inning. Saturday, NBC at 2 o'clock Eastern Time will present the St. Louis Cardinals against the Cubs at Wrigley Field, the backup game Detroit at Cleveland. On NBC Sports, number one in live coverage of major sports events all year round. Now young John Matlack, who many regard as perhaps the finest young left-hander in the major league today, faces Brooks Robinson, who's lined to left and popped up. Ball went in. Watch Johnny Bench catch. Randy Hundley was really of the modern era, the first one-handed catcher. Bench followed him. Matlack with an excellent move to first base. He picked Larry Bow off twice in the midst of Boa's streak when he had, I believe, 18 consecutive bases. And finally ushered out the side distraction. Well, Kurt, uh, uh, she's out of the ballpark, but remember a couple years ago, that exotic dancer who was putting on an exhibition, it's just about the same thing, walking through the stands, and I mean through the aisles, just disrupting everything. I tell you the truth, that's ridiculous. Here's the 2-0 delivery. Foul back by Brooks Robinson. Two and one. Matlack with an excellent fastball. His ball really moves in the strike zone. It will tail away from right-handed hitters, and once in a while, he can make it sail on the fist. He's got good control, keeps the ball down around the knees. Two one delivery. Foul ball again. Two and two to Robinson. And now our mobile camera run by a micro relay system gives you the look from the right field line. We have two of these cameras here tonight. And of course, with the advancement in transistorized equipment, we move around a lot better than we could five years ago with another foul. Two and two. What'll it be ten years from now? <laughs> I remember. Joe and Tony, uh, about 10 years ago, we had three cameras doing a ball game. It was remarkable to get a close-up. Now here's our second camera. High in Three River Stadium looking down. And the other one in the National League bullpen. The 2-2 delivery. There's a drive in a deep right center. So then you room again. Two outs. George Hendrick holds it first. And Thurman Munson coming up. Munson has doubled and popped up. So far in my mind, Joe and Kurt, the defense of the National League has been about the standout thing in this ball game. Garvey has made a great play to save a run. Cedeno saved at least one run by that catch in right center field. So they've made about four good plays. And Joe Morgan made a good stab right. on the hot smash off the bat of Jastrzemski. Two outs, Hendrick at first. We're in the top of the sixth inning. Sent your way by NBC. 25 consecutive years of televising the All-Star Game and, of course, the World Series this October. Joe, pitchers like Matt Lack hard to catch the way his ball darts around the strike zone? Not really, Tony, because he is around that strike zone. It does move, but uh, he's around the plate. Changed up that time. Two balls and no strikes to Munson. The guys that make it tough are the guys that got you up and down like a yo-yo, and you don't know where it's going. Frank Robinson is on deck, and if he gets a shot, he's going to pinch hit. Frank Robinson. Now fourth on the all-time home run list. And it's three and nothing to Thurman Munson. What do you think, Kurt? They've been turning him loose. You think he's going to hit? Come I on. don't. I don't. I don't think so. I think. I think they like got to, give to take on. Yeah, Robbie is shot with a couple men on. 
Taken all away. Taken ball four. Frank Robinson now will bat. There's Yogi Bear. He's getting a little anxious. The National League manager and Joe Garajol, his old buddy in the hill in St. Louis. Our fans might recall early in the ball game where we did a little tape with Henry Aaron where he said if he were offered the Atlanta Braves manager's job, he would take it. He also said and further elaborated to the press that he thought Frank Robinson, the man at the plate right now, should have gotten the California Angels manager's job. But there's going to be something stirred up in the press tomorrow, fellas. He was that straightforward, huh, Tony? Yeah, I guess he was. Frank Robinson, speaking of those 3,000 hits, he's not far away either. And he fouls it off the bat handle, might have broken his bat. Nope. He needs 141 more hits to reach 3,000. And he'd like to go for that goal. He says he'll try and play next year also. He did break his bat. When you talk about the quick bats, you have to have this fellow among the top three because he stands right on top of that plate, sometimes his elbow even in the strike zone, <laughs> and right on top of it. <laughs> he had some kind of funny comment. He's got the bench broken up on that one. Well, he's led the National League many years and being hit by pitch balls and moved the American League. He got hit by the most pitch balls. He's led uh, the voting as the most valuable player in the National League, then went to the American League Same thing. and won the most valuable player award in Here the American it is again. League. He's that fastball back. moving right on the fist. It looked like it's, it might have been a slider, but he really jammed him. The ball almost hit, Frank. I don't even know how he got out in front on it and pulled it. He really sawed him off. Tony, I wonder if he was laughing because uh, you played an all-star game, so you know you get a couple free new bats. He may have <laughs> wanted to take one of them home for a souvenir, and now he's got to use it. One strike to Frank Robinson. Two down, runners on first and second. American League, two runs down. There's the bullpen, Lynn McLaughlin warming up. Had an outstanding year for the Cardinals. Messer Smith started, Brett pitched two innings, and now Matlack. Curve, full. what a curve that was. He really broke that one off. That's the best curve we've seen tonight. That was one. Uncle Charlie Curd. <laughs> right off the end of the table. One ball, two strikes. Here's the breaking pitch again as Frank just can't hold up. Took a little bit off. It had Robinson out in front. Ball almost hitting in the dirt. Yes, it did. Bench digging it out. It really broke off the table. There's a ground ball. Morgan plays it in back a second. Scoops to Boa. Fine play again by the National League infield. That's the difference tonight. No runs, a hit, no errors, two left. At the end of five and a half, four to two National League. Now a message paid for by the Pittsburgh Pirates. The official 1974 All-Star program is being offered by mail to fans and collectors for $2.50. The 72-page book contains special features with color photographs on baseball's all-time All-Stars. Mandel, Clemente, Musial, Mays, Robinson, Williams, Aaron, Barra, Kaline. Scouting reports, photos of the 74 squad. A pictorial history of the All-Star contest and many other interesting articles. Send $2.50 to All-Star Program, Free River Stadium, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 15212. We have a new pitcher now for the American League, Jim Catfish Hunter. 14 wins, 8 losses. Started the season with a quick victory getaway they went into a mysterious slump and then bounced back he has a six game winning streak now he's not lost since June 16th when the Yankees beat him and an earned run average of 2.63 three years in a row he's won over 20 games and when the A's need him in that fifth game of the playoffs or in that seventh or that big game in the World Series he's the man that's done it for him Kurt last Saturday when we did the uh Game of the week from Cleveland. He hooked up with Gaylord Perry, and it was really a classic pitching duel, Perry and Hunter. You talk about a competitor. We talked about Perry. This fella, as they say, has a pretty good size Valentine going for him. Steve Garvey's the batting star tonight. He's two out of two, and it's a strike by Hunter. Garvey is single. He scored a run in the second. He doubled to knock in a run in the fourth. He's two for two. Mike Schmidt is on deck. He's going to bat for Ron Say. That's hit to Robinson at third. It's a foul ball. 
The American League infield remains Robinson at third, Campanaris at short, Rich at second, Yastrzemski at first. The outfield is Rudy in left, Hendrick in center, Jackson in right. That's one of those bats, I believe. You saw it standing at home plate. The bat boy <laughs> left it there all by itself. I think it's one of those with a hollowed-out tip where you've got a flat top. <laughs> now, the reason for that <laughs> is, uh, Pee Wee Reese was explaining to me, it takes about a half ounce or an ounce weight out of the bat. You can't hit with the end of the bat. Right. And Hunter strikes out the first man. He faces Steve Garvey. Now Mike Schmidt, another right in man in this game. You fans, his name wasn't on the list. You wrote his name down. And the young third baseman of the Phillies hitting 314, 19 homers, 67 RBI. And we're going to have another pinch hitter. Tony Perez is coming out on deck for the National League. Tony Perez. Four to two, National League ahead. As we always have a busy telecast in these games with players shuttling in and out and pinch hitters, defensive changes, pitcher changes. Ron Say had knocked in two runs. He's left the game. Hunter behind 3-0. You know, I asked Jim, then I said, there's Sparky Anderson, the third base coach, hit or take, huh? I said, Tell me the true story of that nickname, hey, Catfish. Knocked, well, he said, you know who gave me that nickname? He said, Mr. Charles Finley. There's a strike. He, when he signed him, he said, Jim, I've got to have a nickname for you. <laughs> when you're six years old, you're missing all day. Foul ball back. You went fishing. Nobody could find you. You came home at 6 o'clock with two catfish. Remember that story. Give it back to me, Donald. When I was six years old, I went fishing. I came home with two catfish, and that's been his nickname ever since that his owner, Charlie Finley, gave him. What a good nickname, too. And he says, you know, when they introduce me around, they say, here's Jim Hunter. Nobody knows me. But when they say catfish hunter, everybody knows me. Imagine that. If you don't go to big leagues, you don't get the nickname. Right. <laughs> An interesting story. You no, know, he nearly blew his foot off but in a hunting accident when he was a teenager and yet Charlie Finley went ahead with a bonus and sent him to the Mayo Clinic for some operations on his foot he'd never played in the minor leagues and uh, the catfish said Mr. Finley you know you can have your money back I'm a damaged piece of goods right now I nearly blew my foot off and he said no sir I'm gonna get you fixed up I want your arm and what a decision he made to back back it all up I wonder if he can fish. 3-2 <laughs> <Three, two> pitch. <laughs> Foul back. I know he can hunt. He's got 30-some hunting dogs. That could be an embarrassing yeah. question, couldn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you mentioned a catfish Metkovich. Oh, yeah. Well, that, hey, that well, was he, a true story. What do you He stepped on one, didn't he? Stepped he? on one, got an infection. 3-2. <laughs> Three and two. And Hunter's inside. And Mike Schmidt walks. In the last of the sixth inning. Now here's Tony Perez. Batting for Larry Boa. We're going to have some new looks in that National League infield in the top of the seven. This played so brilliantly so far. Tony Perez, all he does is just roll along every year, knocking in, averaging about 100 RBIs for the Reds. You might recall out at Anaheim, he hit a home run in the 15th inning off Catfish Hunter to win 2-1 to one for the National League in 67. We've got to keep our eye on Schmidt because he stole 14 bases during the course of the year. Hunter has a good move. He's an excellent athlete, fields his position, and he's quick to first base. A one and one count to Tony Perez. Ralph Gars on deck. I'd like to have a manager say about me what they say about Perez. Uh, th there's Ralph Gar. They say that Perez can drive in the big run from any place in the ballpark. He didn't want to go, and he fouled it off. One ball, two strikes to Perez. They joined us late. The National League scored a run in the second. The American League came up with their two runs in the third. They took the lead. National League bounced back in the fourth with two and added another one in the fifth. 
and it's four to two National League. That high hard one fool Perez two strikeouts for catfish this inning. And Ralph Gara he has struck out and fouled out. Here's the time of the ball game I like to watch to see how pitchers if they continue to work the same way they've been getting Gar on hard stuff inside. They've been staying inside with him. Gar. Oh a great wow. stop by Yastrzemski to rob Gar of a double. Yastrzemski makes the play of the game for the American League here in the last of the set. Yaz moving off the base with Schmidt. And that's a difficult play because his momentum was going towards second base after he moved off the bag after <laughs> makes a nice dainty tag. He's blown a bubble there as he did it. Look at so nonchalantly. <laughs> oh, the end of six innings, the National League four, the American League two. Stan Musial has hit more home runs, six in all-star game history than any other player, but I bet the one that Stan the man remembers best was at County Stadium in Milwaukee in 1955. Score was tied, and Musial broke up the game on Frank Sullivan's first pitch in the bottom of the 12th. There it goes, and gave the National League a 6-5 win after the trail 5 to nothing. Now, besides Sullivan, Musial also connected off Walt Masterson, Mel Parnell, Eddie Lopat, Tom Brewer, Jerry Staley, all of whom are probably fans of Stan the Man. We have a new pitcher now. Lynn McLaughlin has come on. A uh, new third baseman. Mike Schmidt has gone to third. And a new shortstop, Don Kessinger, is now playing short. Morgan stays at second. Garvey remains at first. New left fielder, Johnny Grubb. San Diego Padres. The Daniel remains in center and Reggie Smith stays in right. The National League figured that maybe their bench team was stronger than their starting team. That's how much depth they had through their squad. I think they've got more defense on their bench now in the ball game and also more speed than that starting lineup and better throwing arms in the outfield. Lynn McLaughlin has won 12 and lost six for the Cardinals. He misses with the ball. He's facing Bobby Gritch who singles in his one time up. Gritch, Campanaris, and Jackson. The top of the order for the American League in the seventh. They're trailing by two. Ball two to Grit. McLaughlin, in his seventh pro season, began in the Red Sox organization in 68. That ball's hit the third baseman Schmidt. An easy play for him. One down. Bert Campanaris is up before he moves in. Next Monday night on NBC will present the Yankees against the Red Sox at Boston. The backup game will be San Francisco at Houston. Our special guest, the man going into the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown in August, Whitey Ford, former great pitcher of the Yankees. And Joe will have his baseball world on before the ball game. Campanaris lifts the fly ball to Smith and Wright. And McLaughlin has the first two men out. What's the pregame show next Monday night, Joe? We're going to go back and check the Negro Leagues with Cool Papa Bell and Satchel Page and uh, Normal Tweed. And uh, we're, we're going to talk about that. And we got some rare footage, and uh, it's a shame that more records weren't kept about the, uh, the old uh, Negro Leagues. Reggie Jackson has struck out, walked it into a force play. Four to two, National League ahead. The strike, Mike Marshall, the Dodgers. The ace reliever of the majors this year. Getting ready. That's a strike. Might add, Kurt, to save me some letter writing. That's what Satchel Page calls them. They're not the black leagues. They were the Negro leagues. That's right. There's a high foul out of play. I never will forget Satch's description. I asked him how fast was Cool Papa Bell. But when he went to bed, when he turned the light switch out, he was under the sheets before it was dark. <laughs> <laughs> cool could run. Yastrzemski on deck. Two out. 
The American League has not scored since the third inning. Change up. Outside two and two. McLaughlin suddenly arrived this year with the Cardinals, Tony. For those who have never seen McLaughlin pitch, he reminds you a little of Bobby Gibson. He wants that ball. He wants the sign. He wants to charge that hitter. He throws strikes. He's got a good fastball. There it was. That was it. Three and two now to Jackson. He was traded to St. Louis by Boston with John Curtis and Mike Garman for Reggie Cleveland, Diego Segui, and Terry Hughes last December. Two down, nobody on. Three and two to Jackson. He got him on a curveball. Jackson is caught looking. Three up and three down for the Americans. And with the seventh inning stretch coming up, but still the Nationals four and the Americans two. In 1972-62, en route to his major league record of 104 stolen bases, Maury Wills, there he is with Jim Simpson in our radio booth, he stopped off at D.C. Stadium in Washington for the first All-Star game played that year and stole it, too. Maury didn't get in the game until the sixth inning when it was still scoreless. But once he did, things started to happen, beginning with him serving as a pinch runner for Stan Musial. Maury immediately stole second and scored on Dick Grote's single. After singling in the eighth, Maury made it to third on Jim Davenport's single when a flustered outfielder threw behind Will. Then Maury wrapped up a 3-1 National League win, scoring on a close play after Leon Wagner caught Felipe Alou's foul fly. A dazzling performance by Maury Wills, who may not have been the fastest man ever to run the bases, but certainly was the smartest and the best. Now we're in the last of the seventh inning, and Reggie Smith hitting in the lead opposition the National League orders up this is his first time up in the game John Grubb who went in defensively is going to bat fifth Kessinger eighth and McLaughlin ninth Reggie enjoying an outstanding year with the Cardinals been up on, among the leaders all year Dave Cash is out on deck there's a foul down the right field line Cash will hit for Morgan Marshall has walked in from the National League bullpen, so we could see him, and you've got to expect that if Yogi goes with his lead in the eighth or ninth. There's Mike Marshall, son of your picture. Four to two, National League ahead. Change up. Look out. Look out. Look out. The ball hit right on the top of the National League dugout as it slipped out of the hands of Reggie Smith and wrapped around the shoulder of that lady sitting there with her hand in front of her face. Want the bat, somebody said? Mm. Usher right there to see if she needs medical assistance, but she's saying, I'm all right. <laughs> she's, nice not gonna leave. she's not going to leave this game. Yes, sir. Well, it turned out well. It turned out well. Reggie over at the dugout now looking over the top, waving to her. Asking if she's all right, pointing to her. They have a souvenir of the All-Star <laughs> game. He let him keep the bat. And they give Reggie a hand, and also a hand that no one was injured behind the National League dugout. Smith is third in the National League in batting with a 321 average. Jim Hunter working his second inning. There's a long drive. Going, going, and gone. Jackson didn't even move in right field, just looked up. That ball was really tagged by Reggie Smith, the first homer of the game. And did he know this was a home run all the way, Joe and Kurt? It looked like. Catfish may have taken a little bit off. Fell high. Oh, he knows it. He wants to just see how far. <laughs> he he should have bought a ticket, Tony. <laughs> all right, we have Dave Cash up. He receives a good hand. He used to play here with the Pirates. Now with the Phillies. This is his first appearance in the game. The National League's ahead now 5-2 to two in the last of the seven. That was Reggie Smith's first all-star homer and his first all-star hit. And Yogi is getting him in the ball game. Oh, 
Only Jerry Grody, Chris Spire, and Ted Simmons have not been in. Of the players who are not pitchers. Raleigh Fingers and John Hill are two of the aces out of the bullpen for this American League team. A 2-2 count. Fingers, the right-hander. John Hiller, one of the most amazing comeback stories of all time. There's Reggie, who just blasted that long home run to right field. Three and two count to Dave Cash. Foul back. Gaylord Perry started, pitched three innings, three hits and a run. Tion pitched two innings, gave up four hits and three runs. Hunter now has pitched an inning, given up one hit and one run. Fly ball out to center fielder George Hendricks. One away in the last of the seventh inning. Cesar Cedeno is the next batter. Sellout crowd of over 50,000 tonight. In the rain most of the day here in Pittsburgh. And this game is being televised in Pittsburgh. Sedania, you might notice in his batting stance as we look in from our center field camera, holds his hands extremely high and wiggles that bat around the top of his head at times. But does he have a cut? He replaced Aaron. Aaron flied out to deep left and grounded out before leaving the game. Sedania would fly to center in his one time up. I think he's swinging a little bit harder than the past, going more for power than average, and that shows in those stats. Well, 299 is not bad. He's also using a power bat, Tony. That handle is very thin, but look at the thickness of that barrel. It's a big barrel, very thin handle. One out, nobody on. Hunter tries to curve him, two and one. And things are getting a little more desperate for the American League now. They're behind three runs. They just they've been completely dominated in recent years in this game by the National League. And yet the Oakland A's have won the last two World Series for the American League. Sedania, one of the toughest hitters in the National League to fool. He always has a good cut. You can throw him a breaking ball outside and he's got that great power to the opposite field or he can you can bust him inside and he can pull the ball. Tough to play. Uh, three two count to Sedania. Five to two, the National League ahead. In the eighth inning, Yastrzemski, Hendrick, and Rudy are due up for the American League. Struck him out. Two down. Had him reaching for the high pitch. Johnny Bench has gone all the way tonight for the National League. He has struck out, single, and walked. He scored a run. Kind of interesting too, Kurt, because he's got three catches and uh, looked like he wanted three catches because he wanted to use the, all his catches. They must like the way Johnny's handling those pitchers. He must. Got the lead. The strike. Two out, bases empty. John Grubb on deck, fine young hitter of the San Diego Padres. A natural smooth swing. One ball, one strike. And the foul ball makes it one and two to bench. Sparky Anderson. This is his man at the plate, Johnny Bench. He makes no bones about it. One ball, two strikes. That's Hunter's slider that just missed. Two and two. Three balls, two strikes. That's a base in the left field by Bench. His second hit, his third time in a row, he's been on base. And here's a young fellow as Barra out in front right now by three. A sophomore in the National League, John Grubb with a 300 batting average. Last year he hit 311 as a rookie. 
players talk about him. This is, he has that natural swing. He's just a natural born hitter. Padres keep signing players like this. They'll be up in there. Another two or three years. One ball, no strikes. Speaking of up in there, it's amazing, Joe and Tony, how the races are almost identical oh. at this stage last year at the All-Star Game. Grubb pops it up. Campaneris waiting. And the side retired. One run for the National League. Two hits. They left one. We've gone seven innings, and it's 5-2 to two National League. Carl Yastrzemski will lead off for years the top defensive left fielder in the major leagues and he's now developed into a fine fielding first baseman. Let's take a look at that play again that he turned in earlier in this game. That was Mike Schmidt on first base. Yaz was holding him on. And he stole a base hit, a possible double. Schmidt might have scored on the ball hit down that line. The amazing Mike Marshall, who gets his feelings hurt if he can't pitch every day. <laughs> the Dodgers have played 97 games this year, and Marshall's pitched in 66 of them. He's won 11, lost four. An earned run average of 2.31, and he saved 13. We have Dave Cash at second base, replacing Joe Morgan. And Yogi's about empty in the bench. Getting everybody in. Carl was robbed of a base hit his first time up by Morgan. Marshall slows up on him. That's a screwball, and I think his Strepsi's going to be surprised if he throws him anymore because he throws three different kinds, one that breaks straight down, one right, and one left. I've never seen anything like it, Joe, have you? No way. The thing that was interesting to me, Tony, is watching uh, Bench give the signals. The uh, three was the uh, signal for the screwball, and he just kind of hung the first one. It was outside, and he came back with three, and he really snapped one off. He not only changed his speed and the break, but he delivery. He nearly had him struck out. That was the screwball again, uh, one of the three. And uh, you can see Yastrzemski was completely baffled by that. All he could do was hold up when he swing. That's the one that looks like a curveball, but it's a screwball. I don't know how he gets his arm into that kind of position to throw it to break into a left-handed hitter. Two and two count to Yastrzemski. Beats it foul. Marshall, at this pace that he's going this year, will pitch in 110 games when it's all over. He holds the Major League record now for most appearances in one season, set with Montreal last year of 92. Can you imagine a man working in a hundred over a hundred games in a season? <laughs> Three and two to Yastrzemski. You don't think he signed one of those old contracts like the workers used to do where he worked by piecework. <laughs> <laughs> Here's that screwball. Let's look at it again in slow motion. This is a little bit up in the strike zone. He changes speeds on it so well. That's the thing. Three and two and Yastrzemski blasts it foul into the National League bullpen. The American League is trailing by three runs in the top of the eighth inning. They've lost 10 of the last 11 games, and they're in a hole tonight. Airman division. I couldn't see it. Three and two. Foul again. He came in with a fastball that time. A few weeks ago, you might remember, Mike Marshall set a record of pitching 13 consecutive games in a row. We have banners sprayed all over this park tonight. Three and two. Yastrzemski is on to lead off the eighth inning. NBC is going to present preseason football Saturday, August 17th. Cincinnati Bengals at Atlanta. Saturday, August 24th. The defending Super Bowl champs, Miami, against the Rams at Los Angeles. And Thursday, September 5th, Pittsburgh at Dallas. Preseason pro football at NBC. 
Number one in live coverage of major sports events all year round. George Henrik's been up one time and he's single. And it's a ball to him. John Brody will join our NBC telecasting crew. They're working with Jim Simpson. And Don Meredith will be working in Los Angeles and in Dallas with Al DeRogatis and me. We welcome Don and John to NBC. Kurt, you mentioned Marshall's 13-game streak, and he told me before the ball game there was not one game there where he was not used the way they usually use him in a close game. Waller also never tried to just keep the streak going, and he said, I could have pitched in the 14th if I had to in 15th, but the 14th we got way behind and they didn't need me. Now he's just walked Yastrzemski, and now he's 2 and nothing to Henrik. Foul ball, Joe Rudy's on deck. Oddly enough, he's been wild with his fastball. His breaking stuff, he's been able to get over. There you get a good shot at Rudy. The screwball really doesn't matter whether you have a right-hander or left-hander to send up against him, but the only two left-handed batters the American League has left in their dugout are Darrell Porter, a young catcher, and John Mayberry of the Kansas City Royals, available for pinch hitting duty. That's a foul ball off his bat hand. Two and two count. Most screwballs, like Marshall with a screwball, if he throws the one, it's, let's call it the standard one, to a right-hand hitter would break inside. And, Kurt, that's what Harry Brekeen did to Ted Williams so well in the 46 World Series. He, his, uh, Williams' belt buckle was the target, and the cat was able to hit it. It was just phenomenal. The little cat won three games in that 46 series. Williams always claims one of the greatest pitchers he ever faced in that series. Two balls, two strikes. Three and two to George Henry. Remember, the American League's trailing by three. Now a little uneasiness uh, abounds around the ballpark. They're wondering if Marshall's going to walk another man. Should be. If he walks him, you've got that tying run at home plate in the person of Joe Rudy. The Strems get first. Don't think he'll be gone. No, I'm going to go along with you. Three down. You strike him out and throw him out if he goes. How about right-handed pinch hitters the American League has young Dave Chalk of the Angels left Don Money of the Brewers Cookie Rojas of the Royals and Sunberg the young catcher of the Rangers well I wonder who's going to win the most valuable player award here in this all-star game tonight that's right three two delivery he reached for a bad pitch taps it to the box to throw to second in time there Kessinger covered. That was ball four to Hendrick. It appeared from up here. And this AstroTurf for artificial surface, the ball almost bounces over the head of Marshall. He just gets into the top of his webbing after he misjudged it slightly. He started going back. Now he leads his shortstop. Kessinger as Cash backs up the play. And that's something that can get confusing when you don't play together too often. And these two have never played together. But it was a good throw by Marshall. He led Kessinger perfectly into that bag. Joe Rudy's been up once and he flied out to deep right. One out for the American League. The outs, the innings are running out for them. They're trailing five to two in the top of the eighth. This Rudy is really the last of the tiptoe hitters. Watch his front foot. The strike to Rudy he really spreads out, doesn't he? He gets right up on that toe for some reason. I guess he feels like he can spring off better, but uh, it's kind of interesting. Makes no difference how you stand. It's what you do. Whoever thought Musial could hit with his stance. Peeking around the corner. Right. Let's see, get up there in a minute. Get up there, Joe. That's it. Foul ball down the third base line. Big John Mayberry's on deck to pinch hit for the American League. And he'll bat for Brooks Robinson. And it looks like Steve Carlton out in the National League bullpen getting warmed up. Nice guy to face in the late innings. Oh. <laughs> oh and two Mike Marshall one of the intellects of Major League Baseball <laughs> made a special study of muscles tendons and he asked him about it says I can't even explain it you guys aren't smart enough <laughs> he thinks a lot like Johnny saying the pitching coach of the White Sox feels you have to throw a lot says if you don't your muscles atrophy so you got to keep out there stretching those muscles one ball, two strikes to Rudy. One out, George Hendrick at first. Go, go, go. 
Fastballs high and away. It's two and two. The American League's had only one hit since the third inning. And they've been shut out since they scored their two runs in the third. Three excellent plays in the infield by the National League. And Sedeno's catch off the bat of Campanaris in deep right center have choked off the American League scoring tonight. This will be a 2 2 pitch now. Struck him out on a fastball. Two down for the American League. Gives you this, gives you that, comes in, back again. Interesting enough, though, that when he gets in a jam, he goes to his fastball. He gives you all that kinesiology uh, business about the muscles and the screwball and the curveball, but when he gets in trouble, he jumps right on that express. John Mayberry, batting 260 for Kansas City, 19 homers, 53 runs batted in. Been hampered in recent weeks by a severe hamstring pull. If he gets that wood on, he could hit one in the upper deck here, any upper deck, anywhere. They're deep and toward right for him, and Reggie Smith is in the right field corner. Ball one. Brings to mind that great Paul Richards line. Hit a home run in any park in America, including Yellowstone. Yeah, Jack Anderson, the superintendent of Yellowstone Park, always liked that one. <laughs> one ball, no strikes. Ooh. He was trying. One and one. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. Well, Messer Smith, Brett, Matt Lack, McLaughlin, Marshall have checked the American League. Dave Cash playing short right field. Kessinger looks like the Romer of Kissinger. That was either one of his breaking pitches or screwball. There's Cash out in shallow right. Kurt Gowdy, Tony Kubek, Joe Garagiola. We hope you've enjoyed tonight's All-Star game from Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh. We're in the top of the eighth inning, five to two National League. He hits it down to first baseman Garvey. Easy play in the American League has three outs left in this game. No runs, no hits, no errors, one left. Last of the eighth coming up, five to two National League. Well, there's my man Yogi Bear, and I just had to ask him about his feelings of being a manager in the All-Star game. Did he ever think it was possible? Yo, did you ever think when we were kids you'd be here managing an all-star team? No, Joe, I never dreamed I'd be a manager in an all-star uh, game, and I never dreamed I'd be a broadcaster. <laughs> <laughs> when you're managing this club, do you think about any of the teams we had as kids? Oh, I sure do. We always had the biggest guys, you know, Joe, we picked. And, uh, Pooch, you know, he's our biggest guy, plays first base, and the fattest guy was you. You were catching. Oh, nice <laughs> going, Joe, nice going. It's a big thrill, and good luck to you. Well, thank you very much, Joe. Two boyhood buddies who grew up together, played baseball as youngsters on the hill in St. Louis. There's one of them, Yogi Berra, and the other one sitting here to my left, Joe Garrett Joe. Kurt, was it like that in your neighborhood? I know it was in Tony's that the fattest kid was always the catcher. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't mine. Well, uh, when it warmed up uh, in July and we got him out there, that's right. <laughs> Nobody wanted a catch. Always the fat kid. I was always the catcher. Raleigh Fingers is now on for the American League. At third base is Dave Chalk. He's the first rookie in this game tonight for the California Angels. He'll be hitting ninth, and Fingers will be batting seventh in the American League lineup. Steve Garvey has gone all the way. He has singled, doubled, and struck out. He's knocked in a run, and he scored a run. Five runs, nine hits for the National League, two runs, four hits for the American League. The National League has sparkled in pitching and defense. And they've out hit them more than doubled. Well, you'd have to say they've dominated every phase of the game tonight. One ball, one strike. Mike Schmidt on deck. Fingers, one of the better relief pitchers in baseball. Here's a drive hit deep into the left field corner. Rudy racing hard. Oh. Hey, what a grab by Joe Rudy. 
sliding into foul territory. He's made catches like that in a World Series the last two years. But nobody ever talks much about him. We look at it again, and we've talked before about how much pride means to these All-Stars. And he goes diving on the warning track, almost into the bullpen fence. Tony, he saw that fence, and as he sees the fence, he goes into that slide, and there he is down in complete control, never taking his eye off that ball, and embraces himself as he hits it. Here's another good shot of it. And as you say, Kurt, he's made him everywhere. I'll never forget the uh, World Series of 72, climbing the wall in the opening game of Cincinnati to save it. And the catches he made in both World Series. He just makes the big play and continually gets the big hit for you. Never says a word. There's a low at the beginning of the season, goodbye at the end, and picks up his World Series check and goes home. That's something. Two balls and a strike to Mike Schmidt, who walked his first time. Ohio University. Schmidt played college ball. Last year he struggled, hit below 200. Got off to a good start. He, uh, you know, he had, couldn't get used to it. Got into a slump. Put me on the bench. Worried. In awe of everything. Now I'm used to it. Now I'm ready. 3-1 pitch. Foul ball back. If he gets the hold of one here tonight, you'll see something. He's hit some of the longest home runs in the major leagues this season. Well, he has the longest single ever hit in that Astrodome where he <laughs> yeah. hit. Hit the speakers up there, which is about in another county. I think it's a different time zone out there. <laughs> Yeah, they do move it back into uh, the mountain time. <laughs> <laughs> From Central. Three and two. One out, nobody on. Last of the eighth inning. Mike Schmidt walks. And Don Kessinger's up for the first time of the Cubs. Kessinger. Batting 267 for the Cubbies with one homer, 30 RBIs. He's played in six All-Star games. Joe, I'm looking for Yogi to stir a little something up here. Maybe put the hit and run on. Schmidt with 14 stone bases. Kessinger gets the bat on the ball. Let's see what he does. The strike. They play Kessinger to the opposite field. The last chance for the American League in the ninth inning. Munson is scheduled to lead off. The strike. Dave Chalk batting ninth would hit second. And then to the top of the order for Gritch. And that's their last shot. They have only one left-handed pinch hitter left. Yastrzemski holding it first. There's a drive in the right center by Kessinger. This will roll to the wall. Rounding third is Schmidt. He'll come in to score. Kessinger's going for three. And the National League has a four-run lead. That's a curveball he laid in there. Looked like he threw good fastballs. He got two strikes on him, and then gave him one of those nice room service curveballs where you pick up the phone and say, please give me a curveball about belt high, and fingers did, and Kessinger hit it. Room service with Sterling Silver. Oh, man, it was right there. He couldn't have... It was just perfect for him to hit, and he plugged the gap. Six to two now, National League. Take it, Tony. There's a two-strike pitch, and they were playing defensively for a breaking ball, a little bit unusual. They were playing for Kessinger to hit late. He threw it inside. He pulled the string, a pitch you'd expect him to pull. He did. Well, Dick, what are you thinking about? Dick Williams, the American League manager. Mike Marshall. Batting for himself. <laughs> Ball goes back to the backstop and in the score is Kessinger. And it's now 7 to 2, National League. Joe, I got to wonder what that last pitch was, the way it took off. Munson, who has the good hands, a good defensive catcher, doesn't miss, miss pitches like that no. too often, unless there may have been something on it that made it really sail. And there's our Michael Ray powered unit in the National League dugout. Uh, Kessinger's happy after a triple and scoring. Marshall loops it into right field. Jackson over. Great grab by Reggie Jackson. He's a complete player. Run, throw, hit, field. 
Well, we've seen a diving play by Rudy and now Reggie Jackson. We've seen a near collision around second base with Morgan. And who says the all-star teams are out there hustling? They want to win. They're not holding back. They've got too much pride. From the other angle, a sliding stab by Reggie Jackson. Two down, nobody on. Reggie Smith up now. And that's to the backstop. That's a similar kind of play on this same infield that Daryl Cheney of the Reds, when he hit one of those seams on this artificial surface, tear, tore the skin on his hand off. Kessinger scored on that wild pitch ruled by the three official scorers. Two balls, no strikes to Reggie Smith, who hit a homer in the seventh inning, the only homer of the game. You mentioned those official scorers, Kurt. He filed this one off. Joe Heiling of the Houston Post, Charles Feeney of the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, and Luke Kay of McKeesport Daily News. Jack Herman of the St. Louis Globe was supposed to be here, but I understand he has some illness in the family, so he's replaced by Heiling. They score by committee. <laughs> well, they do. They get together and talk it over on a controversial call. Two balls and two strikes to Smith. Sal Bando is scheduled to be with the American League tonight. He had an injured ankle. And Ed Herman, another player who couldn't make it because of an injury. Three and two. Raleigh Fingers has given up two runs in this inning. The American League has used Perry, Tion, Hunter, and Fingers, just four pitchers. There's a high fly ball to right field, but Jackson has plenty of room. Two runs for the National League on one hit. There was a wild pitch. Nobody left. We're going to the top of the ninth at 7-2 National League. Here's a message from Major League Baseball. Cooperating with the Federal Energy Office in a voluntary energy conservation program. This country is facing an energy shortage. We know baseball's loyal fans want to conserve electricity and gasoline in every way they can. So turn down that air conditioner. Turn off all unnecessary lights and appliances. Baseball thanks you for your conservation efforts. This message from the Office of Energy Conservation, Federal Energy Office, furnished to the public service by Major League Baseball. Jerry Grody now has replaced Johnny Bench behind the plate. It's Marshall and Grody, the National League battery. Thurman Munson has caught the entire game for the American League. He's leading off in the ninth. And the first pitch by Mike Marshall's ball one. Dave Chalk is on deck. And then Bobby Gritch in the hole. They represent the last hope for the American League in the ninth. There's a ground ball to second baseman Cash. The pickup and throw, and there's one down. And the American League's down to their last two outs. Here's the only rookie in this game. Dave Chalk of the California Angels out of the University of Texas. He's going to be a good one. I want to thank Jim O'Gorman, our production stage manager, and Ed Prendergast for their work in the booth tonight. Our field coordinator, Hugh McDermott, and our statistician, Alan Roth. Now we got a fan off the field and Get on here in the ninth inning. Seven to two, National League. Remember next Saturday, Tony Kubek and I'll be in Wrigley Field, Chicago, for the Cardinals and the Cubs. The next Monday night at Fenway Park, Boston, for the New York Yankees and the Red Sox. And our Monday night game, Joe Garrow, Joel, is baseball world looks at the legends and lore of the Negro Leagues with Cool Papa Bell. And Satchel Page taps it foul. Cool Papa Bell and Satchel Page. How about Josh Gibson? Some say I've had people tell me the greatest player they ever saw. Kurt, doing this research, I tell you, you hear more stories about Josh. It's a shame we didn't get to see some of these greats play. It was our loss. He had home runs over the left field wall, center field wall, right field wall in the same game. Marvelous catcher, could run. 
everything. A ball and two strikes. This is his hometown, Pittsburgh. What is that? Homestead Grays. Homestead Grays, that's right. One ball, two strikes, one out here in the ninth inning. The National League ahead by five. Mike Marshall pitched the eighth, walked the man, and put the next three men down. Bobby Gritch on deck. Fouled away. The American League has been very quiet since the third inning. Just one hit. A leadoff single by George Hendry. Check that two hits. Gritch had a single in the fifth. They've had three singles and a double tonight off National League pitching. And Chuck strikes out. One out left now for the American League. And Bobby Gritch is up. He is single and grounded out. Nothing happens to change this picture. A special committee instead of uh, writers and broadcasters and waiting for a long discussion. Steve Garvey has been selected as the most valuable player in this game. The first baseman. He's gone all the way for the Dodgers. I mean for the National League tonight. Here it is right to Garvey the most valuable player he's got the ball three up and three down the National League has won its 11th game of the last 12. Their third win in a row the winning pitcher was Ken Brett the losing pitcher was Louis Tion. We're going to see Steve Garvey receive the MVP trophy of tonight's game. But we'll be back. The final score. The National League, seven runs, ten hits, one error. The American League, two runs, four hits. Where are we going? What camera here? Yeah. All right. With me on the field, baseball commissioner Bowie Q and the man who won the MVP trophy for this all-star game of 1974, Steve Garvey. Mr. Commissioner, you have the honor. This uh, trophy is emblematic of the most valuable player in the 19. 74 All-Star Game, the 45th All-Star Game. It goes to Steve Garvey for outstanding offensive and defensive play in this game. You clearly earned it. And on behalf of professional baseball, I congratulate you. And by golly, the fans certainly were smart when they wrote you in and made you the first baseman on this team. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Coon. That is something, a write-in candidate. You weren't even expected to show up for the ball game. You were so sick for a while, Steve, and here you play the entire thing. You take a hit away from Yastrzemski in the fifth, save a couple runs, a possible rally, and that's quite a tribute to this man right here for playing that entire ball game, Commissioner. I say so. I repeat, it makes the fans look like the most sagacious people around. That's what we think they are. Steve, one final comment? Yes, Tony. I, it, it, I just can't express in, in words itself the thanks to all the people across the country that got me here. And I think this is my way of repaying them because this isn't my trophy tonight. It's theirs, I think. Steve Garvey, my thanks. Commissioner Bowie Kuhn, thank you. Your system with the cards and the punch outs and the writing has proved that it works. Thank you so much. Let's go back upstairs. Again, the final score of the National League 7, the American League 2 in a moment. We'll continue to review the action of tonight's game. Well, the least effective pitcher tonight, although he was good, Andy Sm uh, Messersmith, the starter for the National League, Brett, Matlock, McLaughlin, and Marshall were brilliant, and the National League just had airtight fielding, Joe Gargiola. I think that was the whole key to it. Uh, I thought we might see a little bit more base running, and the other thing that might point out as far as the National League is concerned, uh, Kurt, we saw some players who were in the thick of that pennant race really do things that they do and we take for granted. Morgan and his fielding, for example. Uh, I thought that was uh, significant. Uh, the defensive plays especially. And there was one key play of the game Although it wasn't a close game, it might have been in the fifth inning when uh, Grit was on with a single and Sedeno robbed Campanaris of extra bases. Just simply outran that ball. We saw some fine plays here, and I, I would like to hearken back to uh, Garvey of becoming the most valuable player. As Tony pointed out, he was sick, uh, he was puffy, but what a story that is that in spring training as a youngster, he would ride on the bus because his daddy drove the bus yeah. in Tampa, Florida, and he'd get around these ball players, and here he is the best of the All-Stars. I, I think we should give the fans credit for 
taking the effort to write his name in a ballot. That's a little effort. That's right. Uh, you, you go by computers, you make them up so early. In fact, Aparicio was even on the ballot this year. But you can't get the good baseball fan. He knows what he's doing, and he showed it by writing in the Garveys and the Schmitz. Has to be discouraging now to the American League. They've now lost 11 of the last 12. <laughs> it is. Let's go down to Tony Kubek now for his final wrap-up. All right, Kurt and Joe, I think the thing we've got to do also is throw some bouquets in the direction of the American League. When you see a Reggie Jackson and a Joe Rudy late in the ball game, down three runs, diving on dirt tracks, on cinder tracks, coming up with diving catches, you got to believe what all these players believe in this ball game tonight. It's a matter of personal pride, win or lose. They're out there to do their best for their clubs and their leagues, and we saw it in the ball game tonight. Back upstairs. You know, we're just about where we were at this stage last year, Joe. Wild scramble, American League East, National League East, Cincinnati now about the same spot as they were last year with the Dodgers and the Oakland A's out in front in the Western Division of the American League. Everything's getting tight. It's getting tough to breathe. As Pete Rose says, the big red machine's coming, and you talk to the Pirates, they're coming. Everybody's moving. It's going to be an interesting last part of the season, and we hope you're going to be with us on NBC Saturday afternoons and Monday nights. On behalf of Joe Garagiola, Tony Kubek, Kurt Gowdy, thanking you for looking in. The 1974 All-Star Game has been brought to you by the Gillette Track 2 Shaving System. It's the closest thing to a perfect shave. By Sears Tire and Auto Centers for die-hard batteries, steady rider shock absorbers, and Sears steel belted radial tires. And by Chrysler Plymouth, the compact car leaders offering eight great small car buys for 74. Two o'clock Eastern time Saturday will be in Wrigley Field, Chicago. The Cardinals against the Cubs, the backup game, Detroit to Cleveland. And next Monday night from Fenway Park, Boston, with special guest Hall of Famer Whitey Ford, the New York Yankees have been red hot lately against the division leading Boston Red Sox. Backup game, San Francisco at Houston. It all starts 8 o'clock Eastern Time and all right here on NBC. The Jesse James and Cole Younger gangs team up for their great raid Wednesday night.